Hi everybody, welcome back to the Kit Plane Enthusiast YouTube channel. My name is Mark Pensestadler and behind me is my Zenith Cruiser Kit Plane. Over the last month or so, and especially over the last week, I've had a lot of people email me and ask me if I can make a video on my instrument panel. So, this is that video. Well, let's just crawl in here and take a look, shall we? All right, just as an overview here, I have a Dynon HDX screen, followed by the Dynon COM radio intercom, and an iPad mount from Guardian Avionics. Then over here on the right side, I have the cabin heat for the pilot side and the co-pilot side, and a couple of circuit breakers. Now to get started here, Let's take a look at the, the Guardian Avionics iPad mount. You cut out a hole in your panel here. There's four screws that hold it in. And you'll notice over on this side is a, uh, a power cord that's locked into place. And on this side, you see this little thing that slides like that. What you do is you take your iPad with the power side right there. You slip it in this way. You push it over, and then when you slide it back that way, the power cord plugs in, and you can turn it on. And I have ForeFlight on the iPad with the, uh, the moving map, so it makes it real easy. Here's my home airport right there. I'm just about 10 miles south of Flint. Also from Guardian Avionics is a USB power charger. They have a couple different kinds you can buy. They have a round face and they have a square face. I purchased the round one just because it's easier to cut a round hole than it is a square hole. And the reason I have it located where, where mine is located, I didn't want it on the panel because I figure in flight, I'm probably gonna be charging my iPhone or something like that. And if, I, if it was plugged into the panel, then you're gonna have cords hanging down well, I figure if it's down here, I'll probably have the phone sitting right on the floor and I can have the charge cord right down here. It'll be below my legs and completely out of the way. Obviously, I have my throttle right here. There's a friction lock on here and you can move the throttle like that. I have the elevator trim switch located here, the flap switch here, and this is the ELT controller here. Now the reason I laid this out like this is because when I'm flying, say I'm on approach to landing, I'm in a traffic pattern, I can have my left hand on the throttle, my right hand on the stick, and with my hand on the throttle, I can bump the trim switch if I need to, or I can use my thumb or this finger to work the flap switch. So everything is kind of right there. I don't have to take my hand off the throttle to go hit a different switch. Okay, on my center console here, obviously I have the key here with my super cool Blue Angels keychain. But let's get that out of the way just so I don't cover up the switches. The switch, I have a master switch. I have an avionics master switch. These four switches are for my lights. There's the beacon, nav, strobe, and recognition light on the wing. I have my parking brake. The UL Power has two fuel pumps, so pump one, pump two, and this is an Andair fuel selector valve. All right, so to get this fired up, first thing we'll do is turn on the master switch, and you'll notice the switch I used on the master switch is one of these locking switches, so you can't move it unless you pull it out and move it up or down. And I suppose, uh, while the Dynon is booting up, let me just talk about the labels I have here. As you can see from, from back here, all the labels kind of look like they're just silk screened onto the panel. But when you look at them up, up close, the labels are made from a, a label maker. 
And what I do is after I cut out the labels, I trim the background as close to the letters as I can. So there's, there's hardly any, this is a black label with white letters. So I trim away as much as the black as I can. And uh, you know, there's other ways you can do it. You can actually have these silk screened on. Um, there's a number of ways you can do it. This is a very cheap, quick and easy method to do it. These, uh, these have been on here for right, almost a year now probably. They're not peeling at all. They stay attached really nice. But if you did want to take it off, you can peel them off. So I think, I think they look good. All right, with the dyne on here, what's nice about this, and pretty much all of the avionics, you can configure them pretty much any way you want. The way I like it is I have the, the, the flight instruments here on the left, the navigation is on the, the, uh, the right side, and you can scroll through here and move it with your finger. It's a touch screen just like the iPad, or you, you can zoom in and out uh, with a knob on the right, or you can pinch your fingers and, and do it like that. On the bottom I have all my, my engine gauges, my two fuel tanks left and right, tachometer, uh, fuel pressure, oil, oil temperature, oil pressure, these are CHT temperatures here, and then my battery voltage, amps, uh, everything's on here. What's kind of nice about this is let me turn on, if I turn on my avionics master switch, you can see the radio comes on now. And obviously you can flip-flop the frequencies and things on the radio on, uh, on the radio unit itself. And what's cool is you can also do it on a Dynon. You can do, uh, just type it in there. You can swap frequencies back and forth, whatever you want to do on here. Same with the transponder. There's really no unit on the panel for the transponder. Everything's done on your Dynon. So you can type in a, a code if you want. You can hit ident, VFR, if you have some other code in there, you just hit VFR uh, and it puts it back to 1200. Standby, ground mode, on, and altitude. So all your transponder controls are done on the screen. And there's a million other things that Dynon will do. I'm not an expert on this yet because I really haven't played with it too much. Um, some people ask me why I chose Dynon over like MGL or uh, Garmin or some of the other manufacturers. And there's two reasons why. Is in the Zenith Cruiser, the panel is kind of low and the seats are up kind of high, so you kind of look down on the panel like that. And I just really like that the bottom of this Dynon is angled out. So instead of hitting a button flat on, you're kind of hitting it down. I just thought that was kind of neat and kind of convenient for this. The other reason is that I'm a Dynon dealer and I get a dealer discount on Dynon. So you know, I chose to use that and buy myself a, a full Dynon panel. Again, with the radio, you can, you can do all your radio functions from here. This is the intercom here. Uh, it has a music in if, if you want to use that. I don't particularly like to listen to music while I'm flying, but if you wanted to, uh, it, it's able to do that. Again, the iPad here with four flight. So I've got a real nice setup here. My original design for my panel was to use two Dynon screens, but what I really liked was, this is an iPad, I, I'm an airline pilot for my job, so I get an iPad here with all our charts and stuff on it, but we have ForeFlight on it, so it's a free subscription. And I kind of like the idea of having a big screen here with a VFR sectional chart. Uh, so I, I put the, the iPad in here instead of a, a second Dynon. Plus, it's obviously a lot, lot less expensive to do it this way. But, you know, I have my flight instruments, my engine instruments. I have some nav on here. Uh, my ADS-B is on here. And I have my VFR sectional charts on here. And uh, I also, I think, and like I said, this really isn't set up for flying yet. But I think you can put the... Uh, ADS-B that's on here, you can also show it on the iPad. I also believe in ForeFlight, I can create an entire flight plan in ForeFlight while I'm sitting at my kitchen table or an FBO. I can bring it in the airplane and through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, I guess it is, it will upload that flight plan onto the Dynon. Uh, so I thought that's pretty cool. 
Up here, I have an alternator light. If my alternator, I think it's, uh, I gotta, actually I gotta go back and check and remember. I think it's an over voltage. If I get an over voltage on the alternator, this light will come on. I have a little USB port right here, and that's for the Dynon. This USB port basically just plugs into a USB port that's on the back of the Dynon, and I can put in a, a little tiny USB uh, thing and update the Dynon or, or download data or do whatever. Now as far as the right side of the panel goes, I have uh, the pilot heat passenger heat and these just open up a little butterfly fly valve on the, the firewall. And I have five circuit breakers and I have other videos on my YouTube channel of my electrical system and some of the theory on how I designed it. So I have under the panel here I have two fuse blocks and so all the lights and things like that are on fuses and the only thing I use circuit breakers for are for things that I may want to try to reset in flight so obviously the ECU that controls the engine if that circuit breaker pops you know the engine's gonna quit so instead of having it on a fuse I have it on a breaker you can try to reset it once and hopefully get the engine running again the two fuel pumps I have on circuit breakers the reason I have the left one pulled right here is because with the UL power, as soon as you turn on the master switch, it will run the fuel pump for 15 seconds to prime to get the fuel up to the engine. Uh, and so I just have this pulled because every time I turn the master on just to do the panel, I don't need to have that fuel pump running, especially because there's no fuel in the system right now. Uh, the fuel pump two, that's obviously the breaker for the, the second fuel pump. I have the EFA screen on a breaker, and just in case uh, it does pop in flight, you know, if I really need the EFA, I can put it back on. Then I have the alternator over there. And just some other things you might be interested in. My glare shield, I painted black, and when I bought the paint, I told them I wanted a flat black, and when I sprayed it, it turned out to be a, a pretty glossy black. So we'll see how that works, if I get some glare on the windshield or not with it being glossy. If I do, I may cut a piece of leather and just put it up there. On the edge here, I have this, uh, it's a really nice trim. It's like a U-shaped trim that goes on here and you just press it on. You cut it to the size you need, you press it on, it goes all the way around. This trim is from Rand's Aircraft. It's left over from my Rand's S6 that I built. Uh, if you wanna get this, just go ahead and uh, give Rands a call and order it from him. You'll probably need, I don't know, I'd say get five feet and you'll probably have just a little bit extra. So I'm not sure what else to tell you. This is my panel. This wasn't on before. This is just a trim indicator. My trim is actually hooked up now. So I can, when you move that, you can, you have a position indicator for the elevator trim. Dine on screen, the radio, intercom, iPad. Some cabin heat, switches, it's all there with an easy reach. Well, hey guys, thanks for watching. I do want to mention one thing before I go. If you like these videos and you want to support the channel, I don't have a Patreon account like almost everybody else does. Uh, I just don't think I need one. But if you'd like to support the channel, you know, I've told you before, I have a little website called aircraftstickers.com. I make some really nice stickers on there you can buy. If you need something special like end numbers or placards or whatever, you can email me and let me know. And I started another web website called aircrafttshirts.com where all of the sticker files that I have or any of the, the designs you see on aircraftstickers.com, I can actually put on shirts now. I bought a heat press machine with a special vinyl that, that heat presses the, uh, the vinyl onto the shirts. And I have some other designs that I make just for, for shirts like this one here. So please check out the websites, help support the channel, buy a shirt or a sticker, and we'll see you on the next video.